Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. Uh, I specialize in lemon law. I handle lemon law cases in my practice. I'm an attorney. And I get people from around the world who contact me because of my videos. And I've got a lot of people who follow me in other countries. And they often say, Steve, what about my country? Do we have laws here like that? And I often tell them, I, I don't know. I can do some research and find out, but there's a lot of countries. And so I can tell you that a while back, I appeared on the BBC in England because the BBC sent a film crew over to interview me to talk about lemon laws because they didn't have lemon laws per se in England. And I've got friends in Australia. In fact, I'm a good friend of the guy named Chris who hosts a show called Road Ramblings that's syndicated down there. And he has me on from time to time to talk about the American car industry. And I think they have me on just because they enjoy my funny accent. But he sent me a note recently and said, Steve, they're discussing lemon laws down here now because they don't have lemon laws quite the way we do, or at least not all over. So the story is from carsales.com.au, which is Australia, questions what are lemon laws? And does America's famously fruity consumer protection legislation work in Australia? Queensland remains the only state in Australia to have introduced a lemon law, which is a form of legislated consumer protection enacted by the federal government of the United States of America as long ago as 1975. Now, there they're talking about the Magnus and Moss Warranty Act, but most states enacted lemon laws shortly thereafter. It says it's named after the colloquial American term for any vehicle that is extremely unreliable. Lemon laws ensure that consumers can demand a full refund uh, and full exchange for a vehicle that has proved itself unfit for purpose, usually through repeated breakdowns. Now, I have to tell you that if you look in the Oxford English Dictionary, they will tell you that, yes, in fact, calling something a lemon is an Americanism. And the first use of it in print was actually in reference to a baseball player, believe it or not, who was traded and turned out to be a dud. And a sports writer said he turned out to be a lemon. And we think that they're getting at was, it's you know, lemon's a bright fruit. Looks all happy, right? Yeah, you, know, you take a bite into it, and of course, it turns out to be quite sour. So that's different from, like, say, biting into an orange or an apple or something like that. So that might be what it is. It looks like one thing, but tastes like another, figuratively speaking, hence the lemon. Now, Australia's national lemon law is the Australian consumer law, which makes much the same accommodation, but often has to be enforced through the court system. Queensland is the only Australian state up to this point to have made enforcement of the Australian consumer law possible through an administrative appeals tribunal at considerably lower cost to the complainant than taking the matter to court. Now, in America, many lemon law cases do indeed go to court. Uh, Many car companies have instituted programs, uh, litigation prevention programs, where you can approach them, especially with an attorney, and say, look, we don't want to sue you if we don't have to. Can we settle this now? And a lot of good cases get settled that way. Uh, some car companies have arbitration procedures. So they say, if you go into arbitration, we'll arbitrate with you and that will cost less than full-blown court. But pretty much the legal system is necessary over here. If it wasn't there, nobody would settle with us. So no, under new legislation passed by the state parliament back in April, Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal, or QCAT, is empowered to hear claims up to $100,000 from owners of these repeatedly defective vehicles known within the automotive retail industry as lemons. Previously, QCAT was limited to hearing claims up to $25,000, so the new ceiling broadens the tribunal's jurisdiction to a greater degree. The new legislation, which also applies to motorbikes, caravans, and motorhomes, takes effect from September 1st. And I believe motorbikes are motorcycles. I believe caravans are campers. And motorhomes are, of course, the big RVs I warn you not to buy. Uh, As well as codifying the owner's rights up to a value of $100,000, the new legislation also restores explicit warranty coverage for any used car that is over 10 years old or has traveled more than 160,000 kilometers. That explicit warranty coverage is good for 30 days or 1,000 kilometers. This protection had been previously revoked by the Newman LNP government. Newman. Uh, Yvette Deeth. Queensland's Attorney General and Minister for Justice said, These measures will build levels of trust in the industry and benefit the majority of motor dealers who are doing the right thing by offering best practice in terms of refunds, replacements, and repairs at no cost when a vehicle is faulty. Uh, The minister also said after buying a home, a motor vehicle is often the next biggest purchase a person will make in their life. And that's true here in America also. Uh, when you talk about the size of purchases people make, the number one thing is always they buy a house. Number two, 
car. And I've known people who bought houses that um, didn't cost as much as their cars. <laughs> Priorities, people. Priorities. People use their motor vehicles for a wide variety of purposes. Getting to and from work, running a business, taking their kids to school and sport, going to the supermarket, and going on holidays are just some of them. When you invest in a car or a caravan, you don't expect it to be off the road for a lengthy period with all the stress and inconvenience that that can cause. Under Australian consumer law, the consumer may demand and receive a refund in full for the cost of purchasing a defective vehicle. So, similar to Michigan's Lemon Law and the Lemon Law of all 50 states here, which varies slightly from state to state. Queensland's Lemon Law shifts claims for redress under Australian consumer law statutes from a formal court of law to QCAT, as Yvette Death explained. Consumers are entitled to a refund of a product as a major failure of the consumer guarantees. It is important that consumers are able to have their matter heard through a court or tribunal. QCAT provides an easier and less expensive avenue to resolve legal disputes, so this reform will enable more buyers to enforce their rights without the need to go to court. For a vehicle to be considered subject to lemon law, it must be demonstrably unfit for purpose and of unacceptable quality as supplied. So I, I don't have the law in front of me, and I know that's a summary. In Michigan and in most states, the law says the vehicle must have a substantial defect. And the substantial defect has not been repaired after a certain amount of time or a certain number of repair attempts, usually three or four repair attempts or 30 days in the shop. And that substantial defect must continue to exist. So here, demonstrably unfit for purpose sounds like the same thing, just phrased differently. And unfit for the purpose usually is a description you hear when you talk about the implied warranty of merchantability, which is a common law concept that we have here in America. I'm sure they have it in British common law. I'm sure they have it in Australia as well. But something that's unfit for the ordinary purpose to which it's, to which it's put. And an automobile generally is safe and reliable transportation from point A to point B. Safe and reliable. So if it's not safe and reliable, then presumably it would be demonstrably unfit. So the real question I have, and again, I hope my Australian friends can counsel me on this, is if you are forced to go to QCAT, the uh, Queensland, um, uh, what was the abbreviation? Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Uh, if you do that, uh, do you need an attorney or a barrister or a solicitor? Uh, and who pays their fees? Because I know in America, if you have a lemon law case and you win as a consumer, the manufacturer pays your fees on your behalf so the consumer doesn't stand to lose anything if they pursue these cases. Uh, I've heard of situations in other countries where they say, well, yeah, you can sue, but if you don't win, you got to pay your own attorneys. And that means that attorneys might require money up front, which means that many people can't afford to get the case even going, even if they have a good case. So that's the real question is how streamlined this process is. But the fact that there's a law on the books addressing it is in and of itself very, very important. So I'm glad to see, uh, like I said, Australia's got the general law, but then Queensland has its own lemon law. So the question will be to see how well that plays out, whether it helps people, if it works popularly, as I can tell you right now, that the lemon laws are among the most cherished laws in America. If you look at how laws in the 50 states get developed, sometimes they get stricken, sometimes they get rewritten, laws get rescinded all the time. Lemon laws were put in place a long time ago. The few modifications we've had made them better. And anytime anybody dares make a peep about abolishing the lemon law, people go nuts. People go nuts. And people recognize that, yeah, if you're going to make that huge investment in an automobile, there better be some teeth behind the warranties uh, and getting the warranties enforced. And if the manufacturers can't stand up for their warranties, then the consumer's got to be able to have some level footing to deal with the manufacturer on that. So we'll follow this as we always do. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye.